Hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. So as you can tell from the title of this video, today I'm going to be talking about the single volume titles and the anthologies that are currently on my physical shelves. I do have some on my Kindle, but I'm not gonna talk about those here because I am going to be doing a separate video for my digital volume. Let's get into this. I'm actually going to start with what I'm currently reading and that is Stupid Love Comedy by Su 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 Sakurai. Technically it is an omnibus and I didn't want to include omnibus volumes in here but I'm going ahead and adding this one just because I want to talk about it <laughs> because I am loving it so far. This is a story about a young woman who is a mangaka and her editor who happens to be a sexy man. This story reminds me so much of Otome games and yes, I do occasionally play Otome games, not very often because they be getting my real money and listen, I'm trying really hard to not spend real money on daggone phone games. Like I used to play Love Nikki. I don't play that game anymore because the, the amount of money that I spent on that game. I can't even delete it because of all the money I spent on that game. I'm embarrassed. I am enjoying this so far. I know that there are people who don't like it, there are people who are meh about it, and there are people who love it. I will be talking about this in a manga chat sooner or later. Don't, uh, wait up, don't hold your breath. It'll happen eventually, just don't hold your breath while you're waiting because I don't want any of y'all to pass out. <laughs> Next up, I have I Married My Best Friend to Shut My Parents Up by Kodama Naoko. This I have talked about in my Yuri slash Girls Love Collection video, but it is a story about two women who are friends that enter into a fake marriage that turns into something a little less fake and I do love this so I don't think I'm going to do a separate manga chat about this one because at this point I don't need to. It's clear that I love it and it's a freaking one volume. Go get it. <laughs> so next up is my stack of Erika Sakurazawa titles. All of these are single volumes. I think the only one that kind of has a continuation is Angel. Um, Angel Nest is the sort of sequel, but I don't think you need to read one if you've read the other. Like, you can read them separately. I have only read Angel and Angel Nest, and I really enjoyed those. I definitely plan to sit down and read her other ones, like The Aromatic Bitters, Between the Sheets, Nothing But Loving You, and the rules of love. And once I'm finished reading all of these works, I do plan on filming a manga chat. Next up, I have Tropic of the Sea by Satoshi Kon. I picked this up on a whim at my favorite comic book store in Oklahoma City called uh, Atomic Pop. I went into this with zero expectations. This was kind of a cover buy because the cover is absolutely stunning. And I also read the back of it and I saw that it was something to do with like mermaids and I was like mermaids and I really enjoyed this a lot. I actually talked about this on my Twitter so if you if you're ever curious about what I am reading at any given moment definitely follow me on Twitter because I am trying to do this thing where I have um, currently reading threads and within these threads I share photos of my favorite panels, I share my thoughts. Next I have Train Man, a shoujo manga by Machiko Ocha. This I also picked up at the same time that I picked up Tropic of the Sea and I also went into this without any expectations and was pleasantly surprised. This was freaking adorable. Apparently this is one of several versions of this story that is supposedly a true story that started out on like the internet. It's about a young man who is having trouble with love. He, he's, I don't think he's ever really dated and he's kind of timid and you know, he's seen in a way that a lot of guys don't want to be seen, but he ends up standing up for this young woman on a train. She was being harassed by this old drunk man. He stands up to this man and she's like, oh my gosh, I want to thank you. And they form 
a tentative friendship that turns into a close friendship that turns into something else. And as he's talking to her, he's on this message board and he's talking to his online friends and they're like rooting for him. My air conditioner is kicking back on, I apologize, but it's too hot to turn it off. So this is a story about the importance of friendship and how online friendships are just as meaningful or can be just as meaningful as friendships in real life. And it's also a story about um, having confidence in yourself and who you are. And I don't, it, it's just, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of themes in this story and I loved it so much. I actually want to read it again. Next up, I have Whenever Our Eyes Meet, a women's love anthology. If I didn't mention this in my Yuri slash girls love collection video, I must not have had this yet. This is an anthology that is so dear to me. I love this so much. I have said many times that I prefer romance with grown people and I really love to read Yuri, but I have a hard time finding Yuri that appeals to me because a lot of Yuri is centered around high school girls. And I know that there are some out there where they start out in high school and then it follows them up until like adulthood. And that's fine and dandy, but I just am not really interested in um, high school romances. I don't know how many times I have to say this. like. <laughs> I sound like a jerk at this point because I keep mentioning that. Now, I was a little bit disappointed in the fact that it's not explicit. <laughs> that's just my, that's just my little perverted mind. <laughs> I mean, I am who I am, okay? Next up, I have S.O.S. by Hinako Ashihara. This is another romance anthology and funnily enough, <laughs> One of the main stories in here does center around a high school romance, so I am contradicting myself a little bit, but I went into this, um, after reading the descriptions of each story on the back, I decided to go ahead and give it a chance. And honestly, this is so adorable. Yes, high school romances are not necessarily my thing, but I mean, I'm fine with being a hypocrite. <laughs> Next I have Beauty and the Beast Girl. This is one that I fully thought I was going to fall over in love with, but I didn't. I do like it and I am going to keep it on my shelves for now. I can see myself rereading this a couple of times um, before I make the decision to give it away or whatever. This is a story about these two characters. You have the Beast Girl, and I can't remember their names, um, and then you have this young woman right here who happens to be blind, which I thought was super interesting, and that's one of the things that kept me reading. So the young woman who is blind meets the monster girl and it seems like she doesn't know that the other woman is a monster girl um, and they form this friendship and it's really sweet because the monster girl starts to fall in love slowly and they're falling in love with each other um, but of course the monster girl has this dark secret this little little stain on her past that she's trying to hide um, and also one one plot point in this story is that the blind girl is trying to see this like magic medicine guy to see if she can get her blind and is cured, which um, I was a little bit annoyed by that plot point because I was like, Ugh, of course she's here to try to you know magically fix her eyesight, but things didn't go the way that I thought, which made me very happy but I, I don't want to give any spoilers, but there are a lot of things I did enjoy about this. There are just certain things that I didn't think were fleshed out very well, certain characters that kind of came out of nowhere and really served no purpose, certain aspects, certain like scenes that happened that really served no purpose. Um, so it was, it, it was sort of a letdown, but I'm still glad that I read it. The art is really cute, but since this is not a manga chat, I'm not going to stop and show y'all. If you want me to do a manga chat on this specifically, let me know, and I, I will. So, moving on. 
Next, I have Mushroom Girls in Love. This is by K. Murayama. I loved this. I would absolutely love to see this in a series, even if it's a short series, like three to five volumes or something like that. This is a story that's set in a time when humans are not around, um, but like these little mushroom people exist, and everyone is biologically female, which is so cool to me. So there are these mushroom people that are biologically female, and um, the way they procreate is also very interesting. It's just, it's very interesting. I just, I loved the world building in this story, and I loved the two main characters, these adorable cutie pies right here. <laughs> I really loved this, and I would be more than happy to do a manga chat about this. There's a gnat. I actually plan to eventually. I just have a lot of things. <laughs> Next up, I have Little Miss P by Ken Koyama. I recently did a manga chat about this one, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore, but y'all already know I love it so much. Here I have Pink by Koyoko Okazaki. I have not talked about this. I need to reread this for the third time before I make a manga chat about this one, but it's it's very interesting to say the least. Next I have Eve and Eve. This is by Nagashiro Rogue. I already did a manga chat on this one. I love it so much. I know there's some controversy around the fact that it is labeled mature, but you don't see like nipples and labia. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm, I'm gonna stop. Just go watch my manga chat on this. <laughs> Next up is Oh My Sweet Alien by Koji Miyata. I love this. I think I have talked about this a few times on my channel and on the internet in general. I don't know, I don't think I had done a manga chat specifically on this one. I need to because this one deserves to be talked about a lot more. It's so cute. I love a good romantic comedy that's centered around married couples because I don't think there's enough. There aren't enough series out there centered around people that are already established in their relationship. I need more of that. And here we have Claudine by Ryoko Ikeda. I've already done a manga chat about this one. It was a manga chat featuring this one as well as The Bride Was a Boy. And also, side note, I do want to say that I am very excited that we will be getting The Rose of Versailles in English in December. And if I don't get it for Christmas, I'm canceling Christmas and I'm divorcing my husband. <laughs> Next up, I have Songs to Make You Smile by Natsuki Takaya, the same mangaka who wrote Fruits Basket. Fruits Basket. This is adorable. Another one of those um, anthologies that does feature some high school kids, but also some adult people, and I love it. I think I'll talk about this more when I talk about Natsuki Takaya's work as a whole, because that's a video that will be coming up sometime in the future. Not that soon. <laughs> so here I have a stack of Fumi Yoshinaga titles. A lot of her works are either anthologies or single volume titles. So let's go through this and I'll tell you which ones I have read and which ones I haven't and how I feel about them briefly briefly because I do want to do an overview for her works as well in the not so near future. <laughs> On the top I have Soulfish. So this is a yaoi title. I have not read this one. I'm actually scared to read this one because it is a um, student teacher romance. I'm not really sure if the student is in high school or if they are in college. If they are in college, I am totally fine with the student teacher relationship. I know that probably sounds hypocritical, but at least when you're in college, you are an adult. But I trust Fumi Yoshinaga as a mangaka, and you know, I, I definitely, when I read her stories, even when she writes stories about like, things that are uncomfortable. I never get the sense that she is condoning that uncomfortable thing. I think she's writing from a place of like showing us these problematic things and saying like this is stuff that actually does happen or can happen or whatever, but it never feels like she's condoning it. Sometimes you read stuff and it feels like the author is condoning it, 
whether they really are or not, it can feel like it. And she doesn't, I, she never writes in a way that makes me feel like she's condoning it. So I'm going to read this. Next, I have Don't Say Any More, Darling. This is an anthology. Whew. I actually think I did a manga chat on this one. So I'm not going to go too into it, but mm, there's a, there is a, a story in here that I was like, okay, okay, Yoshinaga Sensei, I see what you're doing, but I just don't know about it. <laughs> Next up, I have Garden Dreams. Um, this is one that I have not read yet. Next up is Not Love, But Delicious Foods Make Me So Happy. I have read this one. I loved it. Um, she's literally going to different restaurants and you get like information about these different restaurants which if I ever go back to Japan I'm going to try to find some of these restaurants so that I can eat there. Next up is All My Darling Daughters. This is an anthology um, but all of the stories connect to each other in some way. I can't remember if I've done a manga oops I can't remember if I've done a manga chat on this one. If I have I will link it here. Next up I have Lovers in the Night. This is another one that I am kind of iffy about because this is a story about a servant who ends up becoming the caretaker of the son of his previous um, employers after they pass away. And I have not read this one yet and I'm, I'm hesitant because I think the son is underage. <laughs> but again, it's Fumi Yoshinaga. I'm going to read it. Whether I whether I like it or not, I will let y'all know. <laughs> Moving on to Truly Kindly. Now, I did read this one. This is an anthology and it is, you know what? <laughs> the title story is a, a mess. <laughs> A mess in a good way. It's like, woo. So this last stack I have are clamp titles and let's just get into it. First, I have Legend of Chun Yang. Now, this is a very ugly copy. It is a library copy. Um, this is out of print. So, you know, I'll take what I can get. Uh, but this is Clamp's retelling of a Korean folktale that I had never heard of because I'm not Korean. So I don't know why I felt the need to mention that. <laughs> Next up, I have the one I love. Again, the cover is not the best. This was a library copy, but I am glad I have this. I have not read this yet, and I do plan to soon. Next, I have Miyuki-chan in Wonderland. I briefly mentioned this at the end of my Yuri slash Girls Love collection video because I think this is... Yuri or Girls Love. And last but not least, I have Shirahime Sio. This is an anthology, but all of the stories center around the snow goddess, I believe is what they're calling her. And it's just beautiful and heartbreaking. So those are all of the single volume series and anthologies that I currently have on my shelves. I am planning to film a bookshelf tour. I did film one but I didn't like my outfit, so I'm gonna refilm that, just not, not today. So on that note, I'm gonna go. Let me know down in the comments if you have read any of these titles, and yeah, thank y'all so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. <laughs> oh. Hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. <clears throat> today, I thought it would be, as you can see from the title, Ahem. <clears throat>